Hello, I hope everyone is well. So, um, welcome to my channel if you've not been here before. It's where I talk about twin flame consciousness. So that's everything to do with twin flames, including things like life purpose and mission and how I've found out about this kind of stuff. So this video is the second video I'm putting out about food. Um, and then I don't want to talk about this subject anymore on here, really. So last year, if you've watched my other video, I went through a very large healing at the end of 2020, which was to do with my physical body and through my stomach. It was connected with my mother who died of cancer, stomach cancer, and emerged, emerged out of that at the beginning of this year, really, into a whole new way of eating that was advised to me by my guides through many different lessons they brought in at the end of last year and how they showed me what was going on with the food that I was eating and what was good about it and what was bad about it and that kind of stuff. So it's a very personal experience through having to investigate because what they did was they brought in certain information and then they led me to investigate further. I came upon what is existing in the physical world, a manifestation of dark energy, a human enslavement, which is running through the whole um, advice given around food by the governments in the Western world and the, uh, the hijacking of our health, basically, for profit. So um, I just want to put out what I've learned and I'll put the links down below if you want to go and look at any of it um, and do your own research and that kind of stuff about it so i'm just going to try and make it as quick as possible uh and just like bash it out and also just to say um that this might have a lot of triggers in it especially if you're vegan or vegetarian um so i can't really help that <laughs> so sorry if it does trigger you but i've got to just say what i was shown um and put that truth out that I was shown so you might get feel one way or another about that uh, but I just ask you to if you do get triggered just look at the information that I'm putting down below in the description box and um, then you know think about it again and um, you know just that really okay so uh, to start off I gave some background in the last video but I'll just do a little recap. So, I was, um, I've had irritable bowel since my mother died when I was 10 years old, and um, culminating, and there's a lot of things I went through in regard to that, which were in the other video, but it culminated basically at the beginning of 2020 when I went for another colonoscopy and they found a precancerous bowel polyp. And I was wondering, how did I get that? Because for years, uh, about 25 years, I've been following the government guidelines on dietary advice. So I've been eating lots of fibre, high fibre. I was basically vegetarian. I had been vegan as well, apart from it made me sick. So I had to go back to eating meat sometimes. Primarily, so I've been primarily vegetarian. Uh, eating what people call a clean diet. So I was having lots of green smoothies and plenty, you know, loads of fibre. Salad every day, a lot of raw vegetables, all that kind of stuff. Thinking it was doing me loads of good. So there was a big question mark when I found when they found that polyp because I was like, well, I've been eating what they're supposed they tell you to eat for to prevent bowel cancer. You know, that's what they say to prevent it. So um, how did I get that? So there was a big question mark there, and then, like I say, I had this healing come in at the end of last year where they showed me how to eat properly, proper nutrition, and in that I had to do all the research in why is that proper nutrition. What should humans be eating, really? And um, so this video, just going to get into that now. So basically, uh, if you look at the dietary guidelines, and that would be in America or in um, UK, I haven't looked at them in Australia, but it's pretty much the Western world. And this is primarily Western world, but if you look back um, at the ancestry of the Western world, there were missionaries sent out all around the world that also projected this advice out to all the far-flung um, uh, 
peoples of the world. So all the tribes and all the indigenous cultures of the whole world were basically indoctrinated into the Western way of eating, which is a current dietary guideline. So this has affected the whole world. So there's a few basic things that they showed me. The first thing was to eat fat and use it as a primary source of energy. This is what my guide showed me. So around that, what I found out, and as I looked up all the science for this, and I read a lot of reports and I looked at a lot of videos by people, and um, the science we're told through the dietary guidelines is that saturated bad fat is bad for you, saturated fat is bad for you, and it will block your arteries and it will give you a heart attack or heart disease. So when I looked into it, I found that the science that was put out in the 1950s around that was flawed science. Uh, it was a guy called Ansel Keys who came up with a study called the Seven Countries Study um, showing that saturated fat blocked arteries caused heart disease. And um, his study was actually 20 countries, not seven. And he just cherry picked the seven that he wanted to put in there to meet with his the advice that he was giving. And that's why they created the advice to not eat saturated fat. So it's actually completely based on flawed science. Um, not only that, but they um, they started to advise people to eat margarine and seed oil from um, sunflower, safflower, cotton, all this kind of stuff. And they told that people that those were healthy oils, healthy fat and to not eat saturated fat. So we were guided away from eating saturated fat, which actually is healthy and very good for you and fills you up and gives you energy and it doesn't um, trigger your insulin response. So it doesn't affect your, has no, there's no blood sugar response to using fat for energy. Unlike carbohydrates, which we'll go into in a minute, which do trigger an insulin response. Um, and carbohydrates, we'll get onto that in a minute, um, are a pr precursor eating large amounts of carbohydrates, which are advised by the governments, are a precursor to things like obesity and cancer um, and diabetes type 2, because carbohydrates, whether they're slow release or um, long release, uh, slow release or short release, sorry, are all sugars. So it doesn't matter if they're whole grain or not, they're still sugar. That's a different subject. But anyway, these seed oils and margarines. So where they're advising these, the seed oils and margarines that they advise are very high in omega-6. And the body needs to be have an, a, an equal balance of omega-3 and omega-6 six fat inside it for optimum health. An overdose of omega-6 causes inflammation. And inflammation leads to disease because inflammation is where, how tumours grow. So where they're advising all these seed oils and margarines, um, first of all, the margarines are fake foods. They're also laced with E-numbers, chemicals, and the seed oils are high in omega-6. So they're advising a diet really high in omega-6, which actually leads to disease and illness. And rather than a, a diet high in saturated fat, which saturated fats, if they're coming from animals that are fed on grass, are going to be really high in omega-3 and very beneficial um, one thing they have got right that they talk about is omega-3 being beneficial to heart health. But when they talk about that and they advise oily fish twice a week, they're completely disregarding the fact that it would be high in animal products as well. Grass-fed animal products high in omega-3. So they're telling lies about the saturated fat. They're telling lies about the margarine and the seed oils. And they're telling lies about carbohydrates. So they ask us to base our diets around carbohydrates. Three large helpings of carbohydrate a day, I think it says in the um, guidelines. And as I said, carbohydrates are really high in sugar, and sugar is a precursor to tumours as well. Tumours thrive on eating sugar. It's also a precursor to obesity and to diabetes type 2. And in um, cell death, it kills cells. Sugar in the body kills your cells. So it makes you older, uh, you die younger, eating a lot of sugar. So... Um, and where they're saying that we should be eating whole grains and whole wheats in place of refined carbohydrates, they are slightly better because they're slow release carbohydrate, but they're still carbohydrate. So they're still not telling us to base our diets around saturated fat, which would be optimal for health. 
and they're still advising all this sugar in one way or another. So, and the other thing around carbohydrates is that carbohydrates often um, include fiber. So they advise a lot of fiber in the diet. So the whole wheat and the whole grains they're advising is to up your fiber intake. And fiber, which is recommended in the diet, um, because it is for bowel health, fiber was only ever recommended in the diet due to Kellogg's, who makes the cornflakes, and Graham Cracker Man, who makes the Graham Crackers, who were Seventh-day Adventists, and their religion stated that men um, were made lustful by eating meat, and meat blocked the bowel and stimulated the prostate in men and uh, gave them a desire to masturbate. Fibre, they believed, would push the meat out of the bowel and therefore the men wouldn't masturbate. So it was a religious reason <laughs> that fibre came into popularity. There were Seventh-day Adventists on the Dietary Guidelines Board back then when fibre started to be recommended and they still are on that board now recommending fibre. Um, modern science, there's, I read science reports on this, to, where they've done set tests to show that eating fibre doesn't actually help constipation, it causes you to be constipated. <laughs> um, and so all the recommendations they give us around eating loads of fibre, and particularly about that being good for co preventing colon cancer, is actually in the reverse. So the reason I got a, a precancerous bowel polyp was because I was eating loads of fibre. What it actually does is it scrapes away at the lining of your bowel and it causes polyps to grow. Um, the bowel is a self-cleaning organ as well, so we don't need to clean out the inside of our body. That again is coming from the Kellogg's um, propaganda, where it was about pushing all the meat out of the bowel. Meat is a really high quality protein filled with amino acids that are really good for health. Proline, glycine, arginine, plus proteoglycans, all these things are really healing. Grass-fed meat, um, eaten in large quantities will stay in your bowel for a really long time so that you can absorb the nutrients. You're not necessarily going to have to go for a poop every day in that case. So um, all these years where I thought I was constipated, it was actually uh, a lot of the time not constipation um, if I'd eaten meat because the meat was meant to stay there for a long time or the constipation was due to the massive amounts of fibre I was eating that, were actually, that do actually block your bowel. And um, there was a, I've been for a few operations uh, down there, and one of them, they gave me this awful stuff called Metamucil, which is a, um, a medical fibre supplement. It's filled with E numbers and chemicals. <laughs> and um, it's bright orange in colour. It looks like toxic waste. And they gave me that, and I had that, and it just blocked me up for days and days and days. So even like, you know, they recommend this fiber and they give it you in a chemical form and it's just disgusting. Um, and it's actually blocking your bowel. So it's another thing that I found out and all the science behind that, the fiber myth. So there's a fiber myth, there's a saturated fat myth, and there's a carbohydrate myth. Um, I read books on ancestral diets through this period when I was healing that described how we used to eat, our ancestors used to eat. And I know there's a lot of people out there talking about carnivore diet, which I went on for a short while. And there's a lot of people talking about vegans. So you've got two opposite ends of the extreme in talking about which is best for health. But actually when you read about the ancestral diet, it's, it's a middle ground that a lot of us were eating because of course when there was few we would turn to one source or another when there was a food shortage uh, it seems so if we weren't able to catch catch and kill an animal and eat it we would go for whatever else was around so we did develop into it being an omnivore which is what we are we've got the teeth and the gut of an omnivore i.e we're not a ruminant we don't chew cud and we're not um, pure carnivore we can digest vegetables so there is a middle ground to that um, and what else was I going to say here? Um, there's a lot of propaganda out there about food. I was vegan for a really long time and it made me ill with anemia and even vegetarianism. I had to make sure I ate meat twice a week because otherwise I would get really anemic again. And um, I see a lot of videos on YouTube, uh, people 
uh, promoting a vegan diet as the best way for health. And I have to say, I absolutely no now that that is not the way forward. And it's not the best route for health at all. And it makes me wonder when I see some of those videos now, are they in the are they in the pay of the companies that are promoting plant-based agenda? So I think I've covered everything. Saturated fat, carbohydrate. Carbohydrate, just to talk about insulin again, again when, you, when you eat sugar, it promotes, um, your blood sugar goes up and then you have to pr pr produce insulin to lower your blood sugar. And what happens is, um, if you're eating carbohydrates all the time, um, you're triggering an insulin response all the time. And though the part of your body, uh, your pancreas that produces the insulin, especially when you get to middle age, which is where I am now, starts to wear out and when you're in reaction to this and you can't produce the right amount of insulin and you become insulin resistant and that can mean that you're you're having high blood sugar or you could or you could go low in blood sugar if you stop eating carbohydrates and you use fat for energy you don't have any insulin response at all so you're not producing insulin um, you don't need to because you're not triggering your blood sugar levels so um, People have been, you know, I read stories about people reversing. Diabetes type 2 comes from a lack of insulin, an inability to produce insulin. And diabetes type 2 is, um, is an epidemic now in the Western world from being, being advised to eat massive amounts of carbohydrate. And um, it's been shown to be reversed by people reducing their carbohydrates. The ketogenic diet reduce, um can reverse type 2 diabetes, Hashimoto's as well, which is a thyroid condition, um, because the insulin response as well, it's all to do with your hormones, stuff like that. But they don't tell us any of that. What they do is they still continue to recommend massive amounts of carbohydrate, but then in response to the diabetes and the obesity that's created through that, they recommend, they give people drugs so the companies that make the carbohydrate foods, the fake foods filled with carbohydrates, the crackers, the cereals, uh, anything else that's on the middle shelf aisle in the supermarket that's in a packet, dried food, you know, dried foods, um, are the same umbrella companies that own the fake food companies are the companies that make the drugs. So they, on the one hand, they're promoting these foods, and the government's aware of the truth around these foods. Because there's a comp there's an organisation called the uh, Nutrition Coalition that has presented to the board of the directors of the dietary guidelines all the information, the new information on saturated fat, and they're still ignoring it, and they're still just made new dietary guidelines going up to 2025, which are still advising massive amounts of carbohydrate, and. Um, so the government know that they shouldn't be advising carbohydrate, but the governments are supported by the corporations that make the foods out of carbohydrate, and so they're continuing to promote that. They're also, um, uh, what's going to say, you know, the companies that make the food make the drugs, so then they get to sell the drugs to us as well. And then you're bringing into this as well all the charities that support the diseases and the illnesses that are caused by um, the the carbohydrate and the seed oil as well so it's like a whole there's a whole dark energy around the food that we eat and what we really should be eating and for health for nutritional health and um, the lies that we're told and then the the funding that's created to support organizations in continuing the lies basically and also the drug companies. So the drugs that they give you for the diabetes and the type, uh, the type 2 diabetes are going to keep you on those drugs forever. And once you're taking one drug, you're going to then take another drug. When you take more drugs, you're, the, dr the act of the drug inside the body is going to deplete the body of nutrients just by taking that drug. Things like um, statins and um, what's those other things called that they put in that are... Um, uh, to control your hormones. I can't remember the name of them. <laughs> um, they control the histamine response. 
these things they use up your nutri they use up the nutrients in your body so once you're on one drug and you're depleting your body's nutrients you're then very likely to develop another di disease or illness that means you're going to need to take more drugs and then you get weaker and weaker and weaker until you're basically just surviving on the drugs that you're having to buy and this is enslavement uh, it's human enslavement basically hijacking our health and taking away our well-being for profit so that's what I found out basically and um, is there anything else I wanted to say about it I could go into like all the dark energy of it but I don't think I need to really because it's quite obvious what's going on okay yeah one last thing then this vegan agenda we call it or the plant-based agenda that they're coming up with so there was this thing that happened in the 1950s uh, which I touched on briefly before in a video on thought consciousness and this is where you have the people that are in existence on the planet and they are looking for a solution for um, women uh, in the 50s the women went in the Western world went back into the workplace during the Second World War and after the 50s they kind of went uh, there was the women's lib and women finding their way into power, uh, leaving the home, going into the workplace. So they wanted uh, this crossover junction. Women were still taking care of the family. So they wanted like solutions for food. So this is when we had the rise in TV dinners and things like that. So in thought consciousness, there was a lot of ideas being put out and creating TV dinners, fast food, all that kind of stuff. You know, there's good and bad to every decision. Everything that comes from enlightened thought can be a you know, looking for a solution, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but also in dark consciousness, in ego consciousness, you've got what is narcissism, and narcissism is always looking for a way to manipulate and control humanity and enslave humanity. So they're always going to take whatever enlightened idea there is, and they're going to manipulate that into something that's using people for profit. So basically, all that that came in the 50s, and then following on in the 70s, and again with the rise in fake foods basically and I don't know where you, where you live but I know in England we had things that were seemed really exciting back then like copper soups and pot noodles <laughs> and stuff that were just like instant food you know um, uh, so all that came up in the 70s and then um, it's rising to this fake food so if you look at that and you look at that that was created and you look how that hijacked our health back then because those fake foods are filled with chemicals you know basically things you shouldn't be putting inside your body at all because they're not food food is something that walks or grows so um, there was this uh, then a corruption of that uh, fast food energy and of course the manipulators came in dark energy manipulators were like we can make a buck out of people with this and then illness started to be created through eating more fake food and um, more carbohydrate based snacks crisps all the things that are available from shops that weren't so much before you know the rise of the cookie the rise of the biscuit the rise of the snack and um and all this obesity something like 74 percent of the american adult population is obese uh, and sorry, but it did all start in america and then it passed over to england as well so england caught on to it all a bit later but they're catching up now. <laughs> um, so we've got all this going on, right? And the corruption of it. And people's health declining. And then at the same time as that, you've got more drugs coming in to help with this decline in health. And people going on to more drugs for the diabetes. More cancer, more heart disease. So despite these government dietary guidelines that came in um, from the 50s onwards as well, uh, until I think 19, 1995 was when they'd got it down to us eating meat a couple of times a week. Not recommending grass-fed meat either. Just red meat. Keep it at minimum. Don't eat any saturated fat. Make sure you eat loads of fiber in the form of vegetables and fruit. Well, for a fr start, fruit is really high in sugar. So again, then you're leading yourself to cancer by eating lots of fruit. Um, it doesn't matter if it's natural or not. It's still sugar. Sugar makes tumors. And uh, what else were they telling us? 
they were still not guiding us away from the fake foods, the food in the packets. So they weren't saying make sure that you eat um, meat from animals. They were, you know, if you go on the dietary guidelines of the USA and you look up a certain nutrient, a lot of the time the first thing you'll see is a box of cereal. They'll put a box of cereal at the top of the list and tell you that that's got the nutrient that you need in. So they're still counting these fake foods as real food, which of course they're not. And um, so you've got all this going on. And um, as it goes on, so we're, we're, you know, this is through the years. So we're moving into like the um, the twenty twenty the twentieth century, twenty first century, the century we're in now. So what they got here in the fifties to the seventies. So if you look at them, their aim, right, dark agenda, the aim is to enslave humanity through food. One of the avenues, because there's many ways to enslave humanity. There's other things going on that's enslavement, but this is the one that I was drawn to see, is that they, they're wanting to bring everyone into the same loop. So they're wanting to draw everyone away from real food. So first of all, they're doing it through the fake foods, which are easy and simple. So they've got people that aren't really concerned about what they eat. People that just want quick decision, you know, quick people that want food. So all those people, and there's many of them that just live on fast food and things that are ready-made meals and all that kind of stuff. And they're not even um, thinking about whether that's food or not. And then you've got all the labels on that fast food and that uh, TV dinners and easy food that's saying less fat, um, but not telling you it's filled with sugar, that kind of stuff, these lies, because advertising, of course, loads of dark energy in advertising, they can pretty much say what they want unless the government tells them not to, and the government still re recommends that we don't eat fat, saturated fat, so they can still put that in a packet and lead you to think it's healthy, despite the fact it's ramped with sugar, ramped with carbohydrate, ramped with chemicals, ramped with e-numbers, etc., so they got this group of people and then they're moving on to um, people that care about animals. So they use the empathic, they've used your empathy against you in terms of that. I mean, I used to be somebody who wouldn't eat meat because I didn't want to eat something with a face. I used to be, very, well, I still am very bothered actually about the way they transport live animals and the way they treat animals while they're um, farming. You know, the animals shouldn't be kept in, locked up in, cages and things like that they should be allowed to roam free until the point that they're killed for food which is still very much how i feel um but instead they kind of diverted that away and they just divert it into don't eat animals at all and that would be the best thing for the planet if you don't eat animals at all and then they direct it to the planet and they're saying don't eat animals at all it's the best thing for the planet they're saying don't eat animals it's the best thing for the planet Focusing on the planet is the best thing for future generations. And we mustn't eat animals because animals, animals create methane and methane is causing climate change. And we need to focus on future generations and we need to focus on compassion for the planet. Uh, so they're taking us out of ourselves and focusing on ourselves and our nutrition right now and what's best for us right now by harnessing empathy again and directing it, our empathy out of ourselves, renaming empathy comp compassion. So narcissists rename, they take empathy and they rename it compassion. And what they do is they take you away from feeling for yourself and doing the best thing for yourself by telling you that you, that you must put other things first, right? So that's the, again, the enslavement by the corruption of your own empathy and directing it towards something that's out there in the future that if you know to basically if you don't focus on your health now your nutrition now there won't be any future generations because we'll all be dead from diabetes and cancer and type 2 uh, type 2 diabetes cancer heart disease that they're not helping us come to the right conclusion of with the dietary guidelines so they're just it's all reeling us out of ourselves towards certain death basically and we all you know we all die but hopefully not as soon as 
they're aiming for us to die with these guidelines that you give us and also worse than death which is being alive in a body that doesn't function properly properly you know that's really that's death in the now when you're even alive like a reliance on drugs because that could have been just corrected by the food that you were guided to eat that was a proper food so this plant-based agenda this vegan agenda is now how they're hijacking even veganism right if you are young you all see these vegan vegans they're all young right if you're young and your body's functioning healthily you can get away with eating lentils and nuts and chickpeas and all these things in the mixture with the rice and the um the beans and everything you know to give yourself a full range of amino acids and a, a young person's body can put up with a lot of shit to be quite honest before it starts to let you know it's going wrong and i was vegan and i was vegetarian when i was younger and i never felt any ill effects at all from it but of course when you get older your body needs better nutrition and um this plant-based agenda you'll see in the supermarkets now in the freezer they've got all this vegan food but it's not even proper vegan food it's fast vegan food <laughs> and it's things that are made they call it plant-based um, so what they're doing here is they're telling us to focus on the future of the planet taking us away from our own health right now telling us the animals are causing the climate change the animals that graze on the grass um, telling us to eat plant-based vegan foods that are fast foods that are in the supermarket shelf now um, so even more directing us away from proper nutrition meanwhile destroying the topsoil of the earth because topsoil is created through animals grazing and if animals don't graze we're not going to have any topsoil left and already the topsoil is dwindling on the planet and if we don't have topsoil we can't grow plants in soil and we'll have to grow them which they're doing now as well these fake food companies are growing plants in aircraft hangars in factories in chemicals and if we grow plants in chemicals they don't have the nutrients minerals come from the soil the plants are grown in they don't come from the plant itself it has to grow in soil so then we're going to have a reliance on synthetic vitamins to replace and minerals to replace the vitamins and minerals that they're telling us to not eat in the real meat that's really good for us that contains a full range of amino acids and in the it's not going to be in the plant-based food in the supermarket shelves that's the vegan agenda and um we'll have to buy their synthetic vitamins which will be made by the drug companies to get any vitamins and minerals at all and um, other things as well it all in this agenda that that's going on is sunscreen if you eat animal products you don't get sunburned so easily because it's the omega-6 that you're eating in the such in the unsaturated fats that cause the sunburn a high level of omega-6 in the body causes um the body to not be able to produce melanin and it makes you more susceptible to sunburn so they're creating the sunburn that they're giving us the sun lotions for the sun lotions are what causes cancer of the skin it's not the sun itself the sun has been around forever we've been in the sun forever sun skin cancer from the sun is a relatively new thing starting in the 70s when they started to feed us the fake foods and um and then we come on to so all this stuff right and it's all in it's all hidden because the government won't tell us the government still just promotes this agenda um, and it's shocking and it's shocking and it's shocking that you that people don't know and that people still think that heart disease is prevented by eating these fake uh, this um, fake margarine and seed oil and they still think that saturated fat blocks arteries. I read a book by Wolfgang Lutz who did experiments as way back as the 1940s in chickens that showed that uh, saturated fat does not block arteries. And um, he had uh, his book, My Life Without Bread. He was a doctor in Austria and he healed loads of people from disease and illness through low, low carbohydrate diet. They know there's been trials and tests, low carbohydrate can um, reverse autism 
It's really good for reversing autism. It's also really good for um, um, epilepsy. So uh, if you watch, there's a movie called Fat, the movie, and there's a guy in there who reversed his son's epilepsy. His son was having multiple seizures every day and they stopped the carbohydrate and he instantly stopped having seizures. And when they speak to the doctor, they'd been to loads of doctors before this, and asked the doctor about why didn't he advise the ketogenic diet in the first place. The doctor said, because we hadn't tried every drug that was available. <laughs> so doctors, you, you know, it's not about the doctors because a lot of them are well-meaning, but they're not taught nutrition. They'll tell you themselves. They're not taught about nutrition. They have to go and find it out later, like Wolfgang Lux did in own experiments, because the agenda is hiding the truth. There's a woman called Nina Teklotz who wrote a book called um, Big Fat Lie, and she went into these seed. She went into these uh, science to these scientists who were doing science on saturated fat and seed oil, and they were coming out with the truth around saturated fat. And when she said to them, "Why isn't this science being put out there?" and they said, "Because we have uh, margarine companies coming along saying, telling us we have to bury it." They're the ones that are paying for the science and they're telling us to bury it because they don't want people to know. So um, all these lies still being perpetrated about how we eat. And then lastly, just to say about COVID. So there's one thing come out already, which is about vitamin D helping to prevent COVID. But there's bigger agenda than that, right? I mean, even that's not in the media. You have to search for that, I think, on YouTube. I haven't seen it. I don't watch the news, so I might be wrong, but um, I get a lot of stuff popping up in my feed on my YouTube about nutrition because I had to do a lot of research on this. So I get all the truth coming up. Vitamin D and COVID and um, it being it's preventing COVID. As you know, vitamin D comes from the sun and we're all to told to wear sunblock all year round, aren't we? Because the sun's supposed to be dangerous. Of course, the sun isn't bloody dangerous. It's life-giving. And... Um, the other thing is not just that in relation to COVID, but the vulnerable that we're in all, all in lockdown because of the vulnerable. And the vulnerable are those that are obese, type 2 diabetes, that already have cancer, that already have heart disease. Those are the vulnerable. So if the government's just told people how to eat properly and really nutritious diet based around grass-fed meat with lots of that every day, broth, filled with all the amino acids, gelatin, which is a healer for the body, and reducing carbohydrates, and reducing fruit, and pr properly preparing vegetables, which should be boiled to get rid of the oxalate content, because oxalate is a poison. They should be soaked, they should be sea um, sprouted, they should be fermented, they should be mixed with dairy or citrus, if you, can, if you can tolerate dairy. If not, olive oil's good to negate any toxins in the vegetable before we eat them. And not so much because fibre actually causes colon cancer. It does not prevent it. Um, so if they told us the truth, we wouldn't have so many vulnerable. We wouldn't all be hidden away in our houses having to wear masks and having to then also pay all our money to the governments in form of taxes that our government then spends on vaccines to the same people that make the fake food and the drugs that heal the disease. No, they don't heal the disease. They keep people functioning barely alive with the disease until they inevitably die from another disease that is created from the drugs they're taking for that disease. So that's the dark agenda around food. Uh, one last thing to say that I'm going to say, because it's in the other video that I put out. So my mum died of a stomach cancer. My mum had around her all the time. This is one thing I remember when she died when I was 10. She always had around her um, ant antacid medication, either the bottled stuff or the pills. So she took those all the time. This was before she got ill. And I remember seeing them always. So she, I know she had something. Obviously, she had these are for acid reflux. She had acid reflux, right? So for acid reflux, we're advised to take antacids. 
As antacids do nothing for acid reflux. If you go on, I'm going to put the video link down below. There's a doctor. There's a few really good doctors I found. Dr. Berg. He's a bit on the veggies, but he does talk some good stuff if you haven't heard him already. Dr. Berg, and he will explain. I can't explain it to you, but he will explain how antacids do not cure um, acid reflux. In fact, the gut is so acid, it's hydrochloric acid. Inside the gut is about as acidic, highly acidic as you can get. So antacids do nothing for that. So my mother's cancer was caused by her taking antacids. And I know I'm saying a lot of things here that I have no proof of that, but I know, I know that it, they were. They were caused, her cancer was caused by the drugs she took. And I know that because I'm psychic and I know that because of the healing last year that I went through, which was about my own stomach, with all this stuff I had to learn about the food and the agenda around the food, was also about what she'd gone through in taking on that cancer so that I could get to this point where I was able to expose this agenda for what it is. Because if she hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't have had to go through what I've gone through and I wouldn't have learned everything that I've learned about how they're manipulating us through the food and the lies um, about food and the projecting us out into the future and making us worry about climate change. And I've always been told by my guides that you don't need to worry about the planet. The planet will take care of itself. So that's just something they've always told me. I've never seen or felt climate change is anything that I should be directing my energy at in any shape or form. I'm not saying an environment because, you know, littering, that kind of thing is a different thing entirely. And as far as, you know, looking after the environment that we're in right now and the wildlife there and all that kind of stuff, that's a different thing. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that. That's just what I've got to put out. And um I hope it's helpful for, to some people. I'll put the links below, like I said, so if you want to look at any of it up. I am not coming in the comments to start defending myself against people who are in ego judgment of what I'm saying because I've had to go through what I've gone through. It was a really intense part of last year. The truth is out there for you to read it somewhere else in science reports. And if, you, God, you know, if you're willing to do that, then you will find exactly what I'm saying to be true. Apart from the one thing that I've told you that I know, that I know, that I know, and that's about my mum. <laughs> right? The rest is the stuff that I found out from other people that are experts, that are scientists. All right. Uh, okay. Lots of love. Take care. Bye.